We at Loop take our values very seriously. They are the guiding principles behind everything that we do. Our mission is to revolutionize machine software, and one of the ways we're doing this is by breaking down complex problems into simpler ones. Machine software today may start off as a simple package, one manager and one developer to tackle a specific problem. But it seldom stays that way and can quickly grow to be very complex. With this increasing complexity, the team also must scale. And in the absence of a clear software architecture, it's not easy to guarantee project success. Because of this challenge, Divide and Conquer has long been a staple of software development. We've built a tool that leverages this strategy to the extreme, and we think it's nothing short of revolutionary. Let's take a look at an example machine that processes silicon wafers. A conveyor shuttles the wafers to the robot, a robot moves the wafers from the conveyor to the oven, and an oven cures the wafers. Square one is to separate the logic handling each device into its own software component. And naturally, a fourth component is necessary to coordinate them. We'll call this a machine manager. Let's take a look at some sample code for this machine manager. We'll walk through each state in the code and see how it affects the other components. In the idle state, the start button is pressed. The machine manager then transitions to the conveyor state, and the signal to start the conveyor is sent out. Once the conveyor staging operation is complete, the machine manager transitions to the robot state and sends it the move command. And lastly, after receiving move completion confirmation from the robot, the machine manager transitions to the oven state, where it sends a command to heat the oven and waits for completion. The logic for controlling each component is effectively distributed between that component and the machine manager. This can lead to a variety of problems over time. First of all, software maintenance now requires input from multiple parties, since the machine manager is a monolithic chunk of code that contains overlapping logic from different components. Secondly, overall code readability takes a hit, as this chunk of code will quickly grow to be very large. Future additions or removals of components turn into major efforts. Let's say the robot is no longer necessary, and instead, the conveyor can drop the parts off directly in the oven. This change affects all three components within the machine manager and creates risk for each of these when they're modified. The conveyor component now transitions directly to the oven component in the sequence, and the two must agree on the handoff details. And lastly, consider the further complication of making the robot component optional. The conveyor component now must know about two separate possible transitions, with an if statement that checks for presence of the robot component. We're starting to see a lot of undesirable coupling between states, as evidenced by the rainbow pattern that's emerging, and we're only coordinating three well-behaved components, as we haven't even considered error handling logic here. So you can see how poorly this approach scales. Our radical solution is to remove all the component-specific logic from Machine Manager and distribute each portion into its respective component. Note that the redistributed logic lives alongside the existing component logic, so there's no need to rewrite that component's logic. This flips the status quo on its head and sets the stage for our alternative to the machine manager. We call it Piper. Piper has no inherent knowledge of the individual components on boot up. Instead, they are each responsible for registering with Piper. This is their way of letting Piper know that they are a part of this machine. Once registered, each component listens for a state broadcast from Piper. We decided to adopt the PACML standard here, as it provides a universally agreed upon framework for general machine state progression. Piper follows the PACML state flow rules and broadcasts the current state to the rest of the components. In this case, the idle state. Components are synchronized together by reading the same broadcast. Per the PACML standard, Piper now requires an explicit start command to progress to the next state, which could come from a physical push button here. It then informs all components that it has reached the starting state. Each component starts its local initialization routine and lets Piper know when it's done. Only after receiving confirmation that all registered components are done will Piper transition to the execute state. In our example, the robot and conveyor have no work to do here, so they respond with done immediately. The oven remains at temperature until the curing is done, and only after receiving its done response does Piper transition to the completing state. Each component on the machine now initiates its teardown procedure and confirms when done. Piper then transitions to the completing state. This is pretty cool, right? We're looking at a truly distributed software architecture without any cross-coupling between components. 
To prove my point, I'll revisit the earlier scenarios that broke the traditional approach and show what a machine start progression looks like in these cases. Do you need to build your next machine without a robot component? No problem. Simply remove or disable the robot logic and it will no longer register with Piper on boot up. There is therefore no broadcast channel between Piper and the robot component, nor does Piper wait for that component's completion before moving on to the execute state. Once the two registered components are done, that is sufficient confirmation. The conveyor and oven components are not affected in any way by the robot component's absence. And as you may already have guessed, implementing a conditionally present component follows much the same approach. Instead of removing the robot component entirely, you can simply add logic that only registers with Piper if that component is configured on this particular machine. The registration can happen in any state, and Piper is publishing the active state cyclically, so the newly registered component will start running its logic immediately after receiving the next broadcast. Note that an equivalent option here is to always register a component and use the conditional logic to report done so long as that component is disabled. What happens now if a component throws an error during operation? Let's suppose the oven exceeds its maximum allowable temperature. It stops its local process and registers an error with Piper. Piper treats this component error as an abort command and will then deviate from the normal state progression to instead enter into the aborting state. It then broadcasts this state change and each component responds appropriately. The robot and conveyor forcibly stop any motion while the oven lowers its temperature to a safe value. Piper then transitions to the aborted state once all components are done. Although the robot component is unaware of the oven component, it still responds gracefully in the event that the oven throws a fault. This provides true isolation of component logic without compromising overall system agility. Let's jump back to the execute state. Maybe you need to take all this one step further and add a new component to a machine already in the field? Again, no problem. Whether it's a simple fan component or an advanced communication one, the process is always the same. And as a developer, you don't need any knowledge of the other components to do this. Simply add the new component's logic onto your machine, wait for each component to register with Piper, and on the next broadcast, they will start chugging along in the specified state. With Piper, we've created a distributed architecture for machine software that promotes flexible and scalable machines, reusable components, collaborative development, and easily maintainable code. Now that's revolutionary.